The goal of uplink power control is to ensure that the base station receives the same power spectral density, also known as PSD, from all UEs. This consistency is crucial because the base station can only correctly decode signals when the received power stays within its receiver dynamic range. Plus, having the same PSD from every UE ensures fairness among all UEs. In this video, I'll show you how a UE calculates its transmit power so that the base station receives the same PSD from all UEs. Quick note. PSD is the received power divided by bandwidth, or power per hertz. From here on, we will focus just on PSD instead of total power. We'll also represent power in the logarithmic domain because it makes the math easier. The received power by the base station from a UE drops as the distance increases. Simply put, the farther away the UE is, the lower the received PSD, as you can see in this graph. If another nearby UE transmits with the same power, then the base station receives higher power. But base station wants to receive same power from all UEs, so the nearby UE should reduce its transmit power. Now, you might be wondering, how does a UE figure out its transmit power so that the base station receives the same power from everyone? Here's how it works. First, UEs calculate its path loss by measuring some pilot signals from the base station. The base station also tells the UEs its target PSD, called P0. Then, the UEs set their transmit power to P0 plus the path loss. Pretty straightforward right? Not exactly. There are two main problems we need to tackle. First, a faraway UE ends up transmitting at a very high power, which drains its battery and causes a lot of interference to neighboring cells. To fix this problem, the base station can ask the faraway UE to lower its power while keeping the nearby UE's power roughly the same. But the base station doesn't want to send individual power reduction commands to every UE because that would create too much control overhead. Instead, it uses a simpler approach by sending a single parameter called alpha to each UE. Each UE then multiplies alpha with the path loss when calculating its transmit power. This way, faraway UE's power is reduced more than that of nearby UE's. For example, if alpha is set to 0.5, uh, far away UE will lower its power much more than the nearby UE. In other words, if alpha is less than 1, we're only partially compensating for the path loss. This is known as partial path loss compensation, or fractional power control. On the flip side, if alpha is equal to 1, it means we're fully compensating for the path loss. So far, so good, right? Now let's talk about the second problem. The base station might be getting high interference from UEs in neighboring cells, which can prevent it from correctly decoding the signals, even though the received PSD from its UE matches to the target PSD. So the base station needs to ask the UE to increase its power by sending a TPC command. This TPC command can also be used to decrease power if the interference levels drop later on. When the base station sends a TPC command to adjust a UE's transmit power, it's called closed loop power control. It's called closed loop because the base station is actively giving feedback to adjust the UE's power based on what it receives. If the base station doesn't send any TPC command, then we're dealing with open loop power control. Sometimes the base station might want to boost the data rate for a specific UE. To do this, it sends a Boolean parameter called delta MCS to the UA, telling it to increase its power in proportion to its data rate. Delta MCS is a simple on-off switch that instructs the UE to ramp up its power by delta. The value of delta is estimated with Shannon's capacity equation, 
and varies in proportion to the uplink data rate. That is all. Here's the final equation for uplink power, considering path loss compensation, data rate dependent component, and closed loop component. Note that this computation is for PSD, that is power per hertz, not the total power. To get the total power, you simply multiply PSD with bandwidth or add bandwidth in logarithmic domain. Finally, we cap the transmit power with the max power of UE. Now, does this complicated equation from the 3GPP document make sense for you? I hope this video helps you to get a basic understanding of the power control algorithm in 5G. Thank you for watching.